let us start. Now, today we will have a uninterrupted session and that is on environment and ecology. Now, good afternoon to all of you. Fine, to all of you, let us start. And uh, what we will do is that one by one we will discuss the topics. And on those topics, uh, I have arranged some questions. So, we will try to solve the objective questions on those topics. And uh, first of all, we will take up the fundamentals and also principles of ecology as well as conservation as chapter. And on that, we have uh, set some questions. So, let us uh, answer those questions also simultaneously. <coughs> And uh, then we will discuss ozone layer, ozone layer depletion, then discuss the questions on ozone layer, ozone layer depletion also, then discuss global warming and climate change, questions on that also, then environmental pollution also. And uh, in the last science and technology segment, uh, biotechnology has been missed, so we will discuss biotechnology at the last also. So, let us cover up and if you uh, are along with me, I will take it to as much extended session as I can, clear as much extended session as I can. Yes, I will see the chat also, fine, let us start and uh, let us start one by one. Now see, we start from the fundamentals today <coughs> and in between we will deviate to include many other things contemporary issues as such. Now, the first thing that we will deal with what? The first thing as a, a terminology, we will start with what? We will start with biosphere. So, let us start with biosphere. Now, we know that, that is suppose this is the surface of the earth. The extent of biosphere from the surface of the earth into the atmosphere is to a height of about 8 kilometers. That is the extent of biosphere in atmosphere. It means that the lower lying part of atmosphere is a part of it. Then it includes the lithosphere, that is the land surface. And not only lithosphere, in lithosphere it can go to a depth of about 2 kilometers. But this is not hydrosphere. This is that part of lithosphere which is devoid of water. Clear, this is that part of lithosphere which is devoid of water. We will deal with the conferences in sequential manner from 21st to 27. We will deal all the terms related to conference. <coughs> and then we would be responsible also. Now, if we will deal, all, first of all, let us deal with the terminology, then the principles of ecology from where the questions are framed also. Conservation is a part of your syllabus. Let us cover up that. And then we will come to ozone layer, ozone layer depletion, etc. So, let us start with that. Now, in lithosphere, it can go to a depth of about 2 kilometers, but in hydrosphere, it can stretch to a depth of about 9 kilometers. That is the extent of biosphere we are talking about. When we talk about biosphere, we say that biosphere is defined as what? Biosphere is called as the organic world. <coughs> it is referred to as the organic world. It is that part of the earth where organisms are present. Clear? It is that part of the earth where organisms are present. Yes, yes, we will start with that also. We will deal with that. We will deal with biotechnology also at the end. And I will take care of the chat session also. I will take care of the chat session also. Do not worry about that. We will deal with all the conferences, all the major conferences in the form of questions also and we will start from COP 21st to deal with COP 27, also the CBD which was convened recently. So, let us deal with the, all those things. Do not worry about that, but let us start with biosphere. Now, biosphere is called as what it is referred to as the organic world. organic world. It is that part of the earth where organisms are present. Clear? That part of the earth and uh, the also there is a demand for being bilingual. Let, let me see that whether I can be bilingual at times. Clear? Let me see whether I can be bilingual at times. Now, <coughs> it is called as the organic world. It is that part of the earth where organisms are present. 
uh, also can see that as far as biosphere is concerned, biosphere is also defined as what? It is also defined as a narrow zone, narrow zone of contact between. It's a narrow zone of contact between land, water, and air. Land, water, and air. That's how we are responsible for defining biosphere. But when we talk about biosphere, we can see that biosphere consists of what? Biosphere consists of three components. The first component is called as what? It is called as abiotic component. Now you can see what is abiotic component constituted of. Abiotic component cons consists of what? It consists of lithosphere, atmosphere and hydrosphere. These are three abiotic components which is present in biosphere. So when you are talking about abiotic component in biosphere, we can see that the abiotic component in biosphere includes what? It includes lithosphere, it includes atmosphere and also it includes what? It includes hydrosphere. These are abiotic component in biosphere. But when we are talking about biotic component, biotic component in biosphere includes what? It includes plants, animals, as well as what? As well as microorganisms. So these are biotic component of biosphere. But when we are talking about the energy component, energy component, energy component of biosphere includes the source of energy, source of energy. And we can see the main source of energy is what? The main source of energy is sunlight, sunlight, which is utilized by plants for photosynthesis. And then plants, when you utilize it for photosynthesis, they would be behaving as what? They would be behaving as autotrophs. They are behaving as autotrophs. They would be called as primary producers of the food chain because the food chain would be constituted taking the plant at the base. Clear? So they would be called as primary producers of the food chain. They would be called as autotrophs, all these things. But they are not going to ask you all these things. Very simple. Fine. Now, let's start with here, plants. We say that plants are primary producers of the food chain. They are referred to as primary producers of the food chain. They would be called as what? They would be referred to as autotrophs. Autotrophs means they are manufacturing their own food. So plants are referred to as autotrophs. They are called as what? They are called as primary producers of the food chain. Fine. They are referred to as primary producers of the food chain. They would be referred to as autotrophs. Clear? Just one second. They would be referred to as autotroph. Yes, we are going to cover today all, uh, the entire syllabus of environment. Clear? The entire syllabus of environment. Dekho. <coughs> Plants ko kya kehte hai? Primary producers of food chain. Unhe kehte hai autotrophs. Agar hindi bolne bologe, to hindi mein usse kehte hai kya? Prathmik utpadak. Samaj jayega hindi? Ya usse kehte hai swaposhi. Clear? So plants would be called as what? Primary producer would be called as autotrophs. And you know very well that uh, the food chain would be constituted where plants would be primary producers of the food chain. Very good. We know that. So plants are autotrophs. But now here, let's include some intricacies also. An agency can be autotroph not on the, only on the basis of photosynthesis. An agency can be autotroph also on the basis of chemosynthesis. See, we can see that as far as primary producers of the food chain is concerned, when we say who are the primary producers of the food chain, we say that plants are primary producers of the food chain. Photosynthesis is performed by plants. So they are the primary producers of the food chain. But photosynthesis would be also performed by some bacteria. Clear? Now, those bacteria, for example, cyanobacteria, they do have photosynthetic pigment present in it. So, they would be responsible for performing photosynthesis. Clear? Also, algae are responsible for performing photosynthesis. Some modified roots are responsible for performing photosynthesis. 
so all these agencies are responsible for performing photosynthesis plants are responsible some bacteria we do which do have photosynthetic pigment present in it would be responsible for performing photosynthesis algae would be responsible for performing photosynthesis modified root system would be responsible for performing photosynthesis so all these are the agencies which are responsible for performing photosynthesis first of all now when we talk about algae now let's gather information as much as we can on algae when we are talking about algae we can see that different types of algae which would be responsible for performing photosynthesis they generally perform photosynthesis some algae are called as what red algae some algae are called as what brown algae then we can see some algae are also called as diatoms some are called as zooxanthellae so let's see and there's an algae much in the news in india this a type of weed and that is called as what that is called as kappa ficus so let's see what is kappa ficus also clear if we talk about yes i'll continue with english but in between is suppose yes this session would be exhaustive yes this session would be exhaustive and i want to bear you all with me that let's complete environment at one go it's just think that we are sitting in a class for revision session clear just think that you're not wasting time you are sitting in a class just to revise all these things clear now see if you are talking about <coughs> algae in india we can see in the coastal areas of india if you are talking about the coastal areas of india there are more than 900 varieties of more than 900 varieties of algae algae are also referred to as what algae are also referred to as seaweeds clear so there are more than 900 varieties of algae or seaweeds we can see that red algae is used for what red algae is used for making of agar sticks agarbatti clear red algae is used for making of agar sticks and when we are talking about brown algae brown algae is used for making what brown algae is used for making of liquid fertilizers clear we are saying that red algae is used for making of agar sticks brown algae is used for making of liquid fertilizers and the state in india the coastal state of india has which has and the coastal state of india which has maximum number of algae clear coastal state of india which has maximum number of algae wo rajya jahan par sabse adhik shaival maujood hai tatiya kshetra mein coastal number <coughs> that state of india coastal state of india which has maximum number of algae is tamil nadu why because there are more than 300 varieties of algae which are present in tamil nadu 300 varieties of algae which are present in tamil nadu and as far as the other types of algae are concerned one type of algae is called as what one type of algae is called as diatoms look at in upsc they have asked you in preliminary examination question on diatoms now di means what di means two clear now these algae are having two shield like structures what they are having two shield like structures so have they have do kavaj numa sanrachana unke paas hai to two shield like structures are there and since two shield like structures are there that's why they are called as what they are called as diatoms so they have two shield like structures then we can see they are single cell they have only one cell clear that's another information and everybody knows that we have talked about the algae is being primary producers of the food chain so the algae would be autotrophs definitely so they are autotrophs they are primary producers of the food chain they perform photosynthesis but when we are talking about diatoms diatoms perform photosynthesis that we know because all algae are responsible for performing photosynthesis all algae are responsible for performing photosynthesis but 
about the item one thing which should be known to us is what that more than one fourth of entire biomass of earth we are saying that more than one fourth of entire biomass of earth entire biomass of earth is made up of what it is made up of diatoms we are saying that more than one fourth of entire biomass of earth when we say biomass of earth biomass of earth means dry organic weight clear dry organic weight hindi walon ke liye do shushk jaivik bhar hai use kehte hain what biomass clear jaise sukhe sukhe patte ho to use kahenge biomass so it's one fourth of the entire biomass of earth is known is made up of diatom it means what it means that the diatoms are present in abundance clear the diatoms are present in abundance and there are two factors required for its survival first is what first is moisture and second is what second is sunlight so we are saying that there are two factors required for its survival first is moisture and second is sunlight and why moisture because they would be present in water bodies only and why sunlight because they perform photosynthesis clear so the fishes small fishes are responsible for feeding upon diatom and a food chain would be constituted clear a food chain would be constituted also we can see that as far as diatoms are concerned diatoms have one lakh shapes and these 1 lakh shapes of diatoms are used for making desired material in nanotechnology these 1 lakh shapes of diatom are used for making desired material in nanotechnology clear fine theek hai bachcho aap hamare sath raat bhar hain okay himanshu very good thank you so much thank you so much it's an organic world yes you can say it's an organic world in that in that sense see but those are very uh, very conventional type of things may not be asked in your examination concentrate on what we are doing right now the atoms it's a question which has been asked in your examination clear so when we blend the conventional topics with the contemporary issues pay attention to that clear now this is about the atom kya kya hai bachcho there are two shield like structures single cell and they have single cell they have two shield like structure photosynthesis is performed by diatoms one fourth of the entire biomass of earth is nothing but diatom there are two factors required for its survival moisture and sunlight and they have one lakh shapes and since they have one lakh shapes these shapes are utilized for making desired material in nanotechnology with the help of diatoms clear with the help of diatoms so that also the inner content of diatom is silica and suppose this is a beaker this is a beaker containing magnesium or a like contaminant isme magnesium hai ya koi contamination hai and we immerse the atoms into it the silica would be going out and magnesium would be coming inside the atom so it means that that the atoms can also be used for purification of water so we can see that the atoms can be used for purification of water what more information you want purification of water now that's about the atom clear it can be used for purification of water now yes dugong dugon dugong dugon is uh, according to iucn uh, just listen according to iucn strictly speaking if there is an herbivore mammal in the marine ecosystem then it is dugong dugon and dugong dugon is responsible for feeding on seaweeds clear sea weeds dugong dugon is responsible for fishing or sea weeds which is nothing but sea algae and so diatoms would be feeding uh, feeded by uh, these things they would be consumed by dugong dugon clear so dugong dugon is what the should know is strictly speaking according to iucn the only herbivore mammal in the marine ecosystem and we are discussing here why because it is responsible for feeding on what it is responsible for feeding on the seaweeds clear now how water purification just one thing just 
Yes, a biotic component is lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere, plants, animals, and microorganism are biotic component and energy component is sunlight. Okay. Yes, dugong dugong feeds on di diatoms, definitely Anushka, Pankaj. How for water purification, sir? Now see, water purification means that, dekho, inner content of diatom is silica. Clear? So, if suppose this beaker, this glass has magnesium as the contaminant and I insert diatom into it, the diatom silica from diatom would be coming out and it would be replaced by magnesium. So, water would be purified. That's why we are saying that it is used for purification of water also. Yes, diatoms help in carbon sequestration. Why? Because diatoms are performing photosynthesis. Obviously, it will be responsible for absorbing CO2 from atmosphere. Clear? Now, let's see second one. Because we have limited time. Only till midnight. <laughs> so, we have to cover the entire environment and biotechnology in that session. Now, see. Next thing that you have to know is Zooks and Thele. Clear? Zooks and Thele. Now, Zooks and Thele is an algae. But this algae is in a symbiotic relationship with. We are saying that this algae is in a symbiotic relationship with whom? Corals. Suppose this side is the coral. So, it is in a symbiotic relationship with corals. Clear? Zooks and Thile is in a symbiotic relationship with corals. And what are corals then? Corals are invertebrates belong to the class of Anthrozoa. Corals are invertebrates without vertebral column they are belong to the class of Anthrozoa. They are marine organisms. And they are also called as polyps. So, they are referred to as what? They are referred to as polyps and they are invertebrates, invertebrates belong to the class of Anthrozoa, belong to the class of Anthrozoa. Ye anthrozoa ke class mein aate hain, in a polyps bhi kehte hain corals ko and they are living in a symbiotic relationship with Zooks and Thile, wo sahji bhi sambandh mein rehte hain, ek sehwal ke jin ka naam hai kya? Zooks and Thile and we can see that what is the symbiotic relationship like? Now corals are responsible for providing Zooks and Thile a protected area so that they can perform photosynthesis. We are saying that corals are responsible for providing Zooks and Thile a protected area so that they can perform photosynthesis. On the other hand, Zooks and Thile is an algae. It would be responsible for photosynthesis, its primary producer in the food chain. And Zooks and Thile would be responsible for providing coral carbon compounds, that is the organic matter. Clear? See, whenever photosynthesis is performed, organic matter like polysaccharides or cellulose would be generated. Now, these are what? These are carbon compounds. Clear? Now, these carbon compounds are being supplied by Zooks and Thile when they perform photosynthesis to the corals for their survival. Clear? To the corals for their survival. And Corals are responsible for providing Zooks and Thile, what? A protected area so that they can perform photosynthesis. Clear? So, they are responsible for providing corals a protected area so that they can perform photosynthesis. Now, this is the symbiotic relationship that can be seen between corals and Zooks and Thile. When we are talking about coral reefs, when we talk about coral reefs, this is Hindi, what do you say? When we are talking about coral reefs. Now, coral reefs are what? Coral reefs are deposition of calcium carbonate. They are calcium carbonate deposited by whom? Corals. So, reefs when we say. Reefs are nothing but deposition of calcium carbonate by corals. Clear? And there is a symbiotic relationship existing between Zooks and Thile and the corals. Clear? There is a symbiotic relationship existing between Zooks and Thile and corals. Just let me see your queries.
yes carbon uh, it helps in carbon sequestration sea beads don't have stem root and leaves even there are there is seaweed bark in yes they do not have generally seaweeds are nothing but sea algae only uh, zooks and they feed on coral polyps symbiosis yes they feed on coral polyps they are responsible for giving corals see corals give them protected area to perform photosynthesis and zooks and they when they perform photosynthesis they would be responsible for supplying coral the organic compounds clear good afternoon okay shelter yes calcium carbonate is caco3 not caco2 carbon compounds carbon compounds are what carbon compounds are polysaccharides and cellulose which are developed through photosynthesis and these are stored in different parts of the plant whenever photosynthesis is performed clear fine this much is clear now now this should be known to you that what is coral reef deposition of calcium carbonate what is coral it's called as polyps is invertebrates belong to the class of anthrozoa they are definitely marine organism they live in a symbiotic relationship with what they are living in a symbiotic yes both would be benefited yes definitely both would be benefited no problem about that now we'll try to <coughs> uh, cover up as much as we can for the pt 2023 clear so that's why we are going in a depth now see we'll discuss everything about corals right now clear we'll discuss everything about corals right now now first thing we have discussed this now let's expand this and discuss what and discuss what is cupophycus and also discuss what is oceanic acidification clear what is oceanic acidification now see when we are talking about co2 which is present in atmosphere co2 which is present in atmosphere is absorbed by oceans and one third of co2 which is present in atmosphere is absorbed by the oceans clear co2 which is present in a atmosphere is absorbed by the forest also and we can see one third of co2 which is present in atmosphere would be absorbed by the forest too clear so these are two big carbon sinks as such but in oceans suppose when we are talking about co2 is being absorbed by oceans where it is utilized now co2 absorbed by oceans is utilized where it is utilized by phytoplankton and we are phytoplankton means phytoplankton means the plant life in ocean clear it is utilized by what it is utilized by the algae algae like diatom red algae brown algae or zooks and thele for performing photosynthesis phytoplankton is a general term for all plant life in ocean clear it generally includes the sea algae the sea weeds but algae we have put separately and all these are responsible for utilizing the co2 absorbed by the oceans for photosynthesis clear photosynthesis but if suppose more of co2 is present in the atmosphere in the take the case that more of co2 is present in the atmosphere and more of co2 is present in the atmosphere due to industrial emission then definitely what will happen more of co2 would be absorbed by the oceans clear so if more of co2 is absorbed by the oceans and which is in surplus with which is in surplus with the requirement of phytoplanktons if we are saying that more of co2 is absorbed by the oceans which is in surplus with the requirement of phytoplanktons we can see that this excess amount of co2 that is beyond the requirement of phytoplanktons and algae for photosynthesis so this excess amount of co2 would be combining with water to form what to form carbonic acid and this is the main reason behind oceanic acidification clear so when we are talking about oceanic acidification we can see that the main reason behind oceanic acidification is what it is 
nothing but excessive amount of CO2 which is present in atmosphere. This is nothing but a but excessive amount of CO2 which is present in atmosphere due to industrial emission and because of that oceanic acidification is taking place. Clear? So, we are referring to oceanic acidification is taking place. I explain once more that if suppose excess amount of CO2 is present. Just one second, corals provide protection. Yes, zooks and chile provide food. Yes, coral reefs deposition of calcium. Yes, yes, Sandhya, that is correct. The correct sequence you are having. Now, see, <coughs> when we are talking about oceanic acidification, we know, I will explain once more. We know that, that if excess amount of CO2 is present in atmosphere due to industrial emission, more of it would be absorbed by the plants for photosynthesis, more of it would be absorbed by the oceans for photosynthesis, more by phytoplanktons for photosynthesis. But if excess amount of CO2 is present in atmosphere, more of it is absorbed. Now, this is beyond the requirement of phytoplankton. Phytoplankton do not require it more for photosynthesis. So, what happens is the excess amount of CO2 which is absorbed would be combining with water to form carbonic acid that is H2CO3 and this is the main reason why this is the main reason behind oceanic acidification clear. So, this would be called as the main reason behind oceanic acidification, but do remember that it is not the sole reason. The other reason behind oceanic acidification includes what it includes fertilizer waste. So, we can see that. The second reason behind oceanic acidification is what? Fertilizer waste. So, if they ask you that oceanic acidification occurs due to enhanced industrial emission, fertilizer waste and also cement industry waste. All the three would be correct option. So, second we can see that also happens due to what? It also happens due to cement industry waste. Cement industry waste. Clear? So, when we are talking about oceanic acidification, one factor which is responsible for oceanic acidification is formation of carbonic acid, carbonic acid and this is why this is due to absorption of excess amount of CO2 from atmosphere, but the other two factors are what fertilizer waste and cement industry waste. So, all three reasons behind oceanic acidification, clear? three reasons behind oceanic acidification. Now, you would have studied in your, yes, I am coming to, just coming to coral bleaching, just wait for a few seconds. Now, you would have studied in your school days about what weak acid and strong acid and then do not say me no because you cannot pass the examination without studying all these things. So, you would have studied in your school days about weak acid and strong acid. Weak acid, so carbonic acid is what? Carbonic acid is nothing but a weak acid. Clear? So, if it is a weak acid, if you are talking about carbonic acid is a weak acid, carbonic acid would be responsible for release of hydrogen ion. In se kya hoga? Hydrogen ion bahar niklenge clear hydrogen ion in cyclinge bahar but this would be combining with the carbonate ion which is naturally present in the ocean carbonate ion which is naturally present in the ocean and the carbonate ion which is naturally present in the ocean now this would be further continuing what this would be further continuing oceanic acidification clear so, it means that again acid would be formed and this would be further continuing oceanic acidification. Is that clear? Further continuing oceanic acidification. Yes, surface and fertilizers. See, as far as now, as far as the pH value is concerned, the pH value of oceanic water you are saying is 7.2, but that is due to the basis which is present clear. 
and oceanic acidification takes place uh, because of global warming. It's not a very widespread phenomena that every part of each and every part of ocean because ocean is a big chunk of water. So, on average, the pH value registered 7.2, but in certain areas where oceanic acidification has been noticed, the pH value decreases. <coughs> Clear? Now, let us uh, see further. Now, this further results in oceanic, this further would be resulting in oceanic acidification and acidification would be continuing. But if we say that the impact of enhanced level of CO2 in atmosphere due to industrial emission is global warming, which is also leading to oceanic acidification. We can see oceanic acidification leads to coral bleaching. Clear? Oceanic acidification leads to coral bleaching. And when we are saying that oceanic acidification is leading to coral bleaching, it means that now, we sometimes jump to the conclusion that coral bleaching means that the corals turn pale. Now, it does not mean that corals turn pale only because corals, if you see, corals are brightly colored. They are of different colors. They are of red, brown, green, blue, pink, different varieties of color they are. Clear. So, it does not mean that the corals turn pale only and it does not mean that the reefs turn pale only, that the coral reefs turn pale because of coral bleaching. The greater implication of coral bleaching is what? That the density of Zooks and Thierry declines because of oceanic acidification and why? Because the photosynthetic pigment present in it would be reduced. Okay? So, coral bleaching means that the corals ke rang jo hai, वो फीके पड़ जाते हैं या रीफ्स के रंग जो हैं फीके पड़ जाते हैं लेकिन जुक्स एंथेले जो हैं उनका घनत्व घटेगा एंड व्हाई डेंसिटी इज रिड्यूसिंग बिकॉज़ द फोटोसिंथेटिक पिगमेंट ड्यू टू ओशियानिक एसिडिफिकेशन वुड बी गेटिंग रिड्यूस्ड क्लियर would be getting reduced. Now, this would be reducing ecological productivity of that area and if the ecological productivity of that area would be reduced, if the ecological productivity of that area would be reduced, now, this would be responsible for what? This would be responsible for <coughs> ecological productivity of that area is reduced. Then we can see that photosynthesis is very less performed in that area because the photosynthetic pigment which is present in Zooks and Thiele is definitely missing. Clear. Thank you, Himansu. Yes, we will try to explain all those things. Just wait for some time. You cannot explain all this thing at within one or two minutes. Just wait for some time. I have just started. Now, see, this is called as coral bleaching. Just remember that in coral bleaching, not only the reefs or the coral turns pale, but the density of Zooks and Thiele declines at the as the photosynthetic pigment present in it is getting reduced. Now, Connect the IPCC report, the IPCC assessment report of 2015. It said what? It said that why the world cannot afford temperature enhancement beyond 1.5 degrees centigrade. Clear? And it said that why the world cannot afford temperature beyond uh, enhancement beyond 1.5 degrees centigrade. And the reason provided by IPCC was that this would be leading to a catastrophic situation in which 70 to 90 percent of corals would vanish. Clear? So, even if we are meeting the target of 1.5 degree centigrade enhancement also, 70 to 90 percent of corals would vanish. So, the danger is posed on corals also. There is a danger posed on corals also. So, this is said by the IPCC assessment report. Clear that 70 to 90 percent of corals would vanish. Corals would vanish. So, what needs to be done for this purpose? Now, for this purpose, we can we can adhere to what is called as what? What is called as the 50 reef project. See, in the 1950s, there was an economic theory given by uh, economist, his name was Markovich. Although this is an economic theory, but it carries ecological significance. And this theory can be utilized by you anytime for writing your answers. That 50 reef project, 50 reef project means 
दैट सपोज आपके पास पैसा है यू वॉन्ट यू हैव मनी यू वॉन्ट टू इन्वेस्ट सेफली समवेयर नाउ यू वुड बी सेलेक्टिंग दोज एरियाज फॉर इन्वेस्टमेंट विच आर कोरल रीफ एरियाज सो फिफ्टी रीफ प्रोजेक्ट कॉल्स यू टू इन्वेस्ट इन फिफ्टी कोरल रीफ एरियाज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड If you want risk-averse investment, if you want risk-free investment, clear. And why 50 coral reefs area of the world? Why not other coral reef areas of the world? Because these 50 reef coral reef areas of the world are likely to survive the adverse impact of global warming and climate change. Clear. But they can be used for repopulating other coral reef areas of the world. clear so they would be utilized for repopulating other coral reef areas of the world fine and if this is done this would would be of a greater economic significance because coral reef areas is not only of ecological significance because also of ec economic significance as a number of nutrients as a number of medicines come from coral reef area so your investment won't be going in waste clear your investment won't be going in waste kaval narain ye eutrophication yahan ka eutrophication i'll teach but the eutrophication has no linkage with coral bleaching as such please understand i'm saying that i repeat it once again i repeat once again i'm saying that that if this is the condition coral bleaching is taking place and the ipcc has said that even if we meet the target of 1.5 degree centigrade enhancement uh, in its assessment report which was published in 2015 then also 70 to 90% of corals would vanish so what should be done this is nothing but a emergent emergency kind of situation so what should be done for this purpose now for this purpose we can use what is called as 50 coral reef project 50 coral reef project was a economic theory given by markovich his name was markovich and he gave this theory and called all those risk averse investors those who have money they want to invest uh without any risk so it called all risk averse investors to invest in those areas which are uh 50 coral reef areas of the world and they are likely to survive the adverse impact of global warming and climate change but they can be utilized to uh repopulate the other coral reef areas of the world because they would be getting damaged due to global warming and climate change and since coral reef areas is not only of ecological significance but also of economic significance we can see the investment won't be going in waste because a number of medicine a number of nutrients come from coral reef areas clear coral reef areas but this is not only the thing that yes 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 now <coughs> this definitely 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 now this is not only the thing that you have to know about corals see in the news is what that government of india is trying to establish a marine biodiversity park in fact the national park not biodiversity national park in tamil nadu clear but a weed happens to be a concern for india and that weed which is a concern for india is called as what it is called as Kappa ficus. Kappa ficus is a seaweed, so it's a sea algae, and this is much in the news. Now you'll say that what kind of teacher we are listening to has started from a uh, term <laughs> biosphere and he has gone to coral bleaching IPCC report, then 50 reef project, <laughs> and now coming to a uh, invasive weed in India, which is called as Kappa ficus. But that's how the questions are framed. I'm helpless. I'm helpless. That's how the questions are framed. Clear. That's how the questions are framed. <laughs> Nasi, Kappa ficus. Kappa ficus is a algae. It's a seaweed, and this weed is proving dangerous for whom? Dangerous for what we have discussed now, corals. Clear? 
this sea algae this seaweed is proving dangerous for corals because corals are of different colors they are corals are of brown corals are of red green blue clear fine so all these they are yellow but the corals are never gray corals are never black so kappa ficus is responsible for damaging the corals and because these corals get damaged they are turning into what they are turning into black and gray corals so if you see black and gray corals these are nothing but damaged corals clear so they would be called as damaged corals damaged corals now kappa ficus is what it is invasive in india invasive in india means what that when you talk about any vegetation that any vegetation is any vegetation is certainly endemic in area endemic means that it is exclusively found in that area clear but if suppose we are talking about any vegetation to be invasive in india invasive in india means that it is responsible for environmental degradation in india so endemic in some elsewhere and invasive in some elsewhere now as far as now as far as a kappa ficus is concerned it's responsible for damaging the corals and turning it into black and gray corals clear black and gray corals as such responsible for damaging the corals and damaged corals they are turning into gray but from where we brought this why we brought this sometimes what happens invasive vegetation reaches your ecosystem automatically sometimes it is brought to your ecosystem so the it has reached our ecosystem how it has reached our ecosystem not automatically but we brought this the farmers in the coastal region of india are cultivating kappa ficus we are saying that the farmers in the coastal region of india are cultivating kappa ficus and kappa why should kappa ficus be cultivated now kappa ficus is cultivated why because it is responsible for giving you a substance which is called as carrageena carrageenan and carrageenan is what carrageenan is an emulsifying agent emulsifying agent means which is responsible for mingling two unlike things which is responsible for mingling two unlike things clear so it mingles and generally it is used in food stuffs the emulsifying agents so it was cultivated on a large scale and used as a emulsifying agent and today what is problem that kappa ficus when it is cultivated on a large scale is damaging the corals so we brought it from where we brought it from japan in india it was brought brought from japans but we can see that it is endemic in where it is endemic in philippines it is endemic in philippines clear so it happens to be endemic in philippines and this is called as kappa ficus yes mosses and protected corals yes definitely definitely fine okay thank you so much invasive india means see i'm uh, i'm repeating your just one question i'm repeating now see invasive in india means that these uh, type of weeds were endemic in some other ecosystem for example it was endemic in philippines it was brought to india from japan and was cultivated by the farmers of coastal area for deriving a substance called carrageenan which is used as an emulsifying agent which is used as an emulsifying agent and it has turned out to be invasive for india why because it is responsible for damaging the corals in the coastal ecosystem clear coastal ecosystem now we can see the corals are turning uh, gray and also black so they are called as damaged corals but the chapter on corals is not over now just remember one thing when coral bleaching takes place and we have said that in coral bleaching the density of zooxanthellae declines 
because the photosynthetic pigment would be getting reduced. Obviously, the Zooks anthellae won't be producing the amount the same way photosynthesis. Ecological productivity of that area would be declining, clear. But when we are talking about that uh, photosynthesis is being reduced, ecological productivity of that area is obviously declining. Now, that means what? That means that if the corals do not get organic matter from Zooks and Thilly, then they are responsible for what? Then they are responsible for expelling Zooks and Thilly from them. So, the corals, Manlo, ye corals hai, and Zooks and Thilly is here. So, corals, if they are not getting organic matter from the cor uh, from Zooks and Thilly, they are responsible for expelling Zooks and Thilly, removing Zooks and Thilly from them. Now, these type of corals, which remove Zooks and Thilly would be called as what? It would be called as stressed corals. It would be called as stressed corals. Okay? Look, Zooks and Thilly and corals are in symbiotic relationship. So, if you think that Zooks and Thilly is not able to perform photosynthesis, then what will happen? Corals would be responsible for removing Zooks and Thilly from them would be responsible for removing Zooks and Thilly from them. So, expelling Zooks and Thilly from them, we will remove them. These kind of corals which remove Zooks and Thilly would be called as what? It would be referred to as stressed corals. It would be called as stressed corals. Then there are certain corals which were situated deep inside the ocean. Deep inside the ocean. These corals. And these corals do not have Zooks and Thilly along with them. So, they are called as what? They are called as a Zooks enthalate. A Zooks enthalate. These corals. And they derive their nutrition from plankton, from life in oceans. हाँ मैं हिंदी इंग्लिश मिक्स करके ही पढ़ा रहा हूँ ठीक है ब्लैक कोरल्स क्या है ब्लैक कोरल्स रेशो है डैमेज्ड कोरल्स ग्रे या ब्लैक कोरल है डैमेज्ड कोरल्स और डैमेज्ड कोरल्स किसके कारण है एक वीड है इंडिया में कोस्टल एरिया में जिसे हम लोग कहते हैं कप्पा फाइकस एंड दिस वीड हैज टर्न आउट टू बी इनवेजिव इन इंडिया इट वाज ब्रॉट टू इंडिया फ्रॉम जापान एंड दिस हैज टर्न आउट टू बी इनवेजिव इन इंडिया एंड दैट्स कॉल्ड एज कप्पा फाइकस एमएलसी फाइंग एजेंट का मतलब है टू अनलाइक थिंग्स को मिक्स करने वाले एजेंसी को कहते हैं हम लोग एमएलसी फाइंग एजेंट जनरली फूड स्टफ्स में यूज होता है ये क्लियर फाइन Thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. Yes, binding together, yes, very good. Or I am mixing and studying. I am going to speak Hindi in the beach. My Hindi is a little weak. I am going to speak Hindi. Don't worry about that. Fine. So this is called as Azuk's entry. Now this is about corals that you have to know. But since we were responsible for discussing invasive weed, Kappa ficus here, let us discuss some invasive plants also which are very prominent in India. And these invasive plants which are very prominent in India include what? Let's see and how they are responsible for, clear, how they are responsible for having an adverse impact, clear. Generally, the corals are present where? Then generally, the corals are present in the continental self. They are, they are present in the continental self, fine. But first, let's complete invasive plants also. We have completed the topic of corals. So, let's complete the invasive plant also here. Now, see, when we are talking about invasive plants, we can see invasive species. It can be both plants and animals. Invasive species means that they are not endemic to your ecosystem. They are endemic in some other ecosystem. They are exclusively found in some other ecosystem. But they have turned out to be invasive for your ecosystem. They have reached your ecosystem and they are responsible for environmental degradation in your ecosystem. Clear? So, they have reached your ecosystem and is responsible for environmental degradation of your ecosystem. So, they would be called as what? They would be called as invasive plants. Fine. Invasive species. Now, they can be both animals also and plants also. 
clear. Let's consider here plants, vegetation. So, one vegetation we have discussed is in the form of an algae which is called as cupophagus. But the other vegetation which are invasive in India. So, if we talk about only and only vegetation, let us take up vegetation in India and talk about what invasive vegetation in India, invasive plants in India. So, invasive plants are also called as what? Are also referred to as exotic plants are also referred to as what? It is also called as alien plants. Invasive plants, exotic plant or alien plants. Clear? And these are not natural to your ecosystem. So, they are not natural to our ecosystem, to our ecosystem. Clear? They are invasive in our ecosystem. So, they are natural to some other ecosystem, but they are invasive in our ecosystem. That is why. And they are invasive, why? Because they are responsible for large scale degradation in our ecosystem. Clear? Large scale. Yes, my voice is like Tharoor, sir. Very good. <laughs> and what? Maza aa raha hai, sir. Great session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, whatever time I'll get. See, whatever time I'll get. I I I want to continue till midnight, three o'clock. Clear, four o'clock. But if you are with me, then I'll continue for that and try to cover up environment and also biotechnology. Clear? Is it all right that we continue today? Fine. So let's see till when we continue. Not let let us not fix a target. Let's see how much can be done. Now, this is, called, this is invasive for our ecosystem. That is not natural to our ecosystem, but they are invasive for our ecosystem. Now, these kind of plants, these kind of vegetations are responsible for, remo for uh, emission of certain chemicals. They are responsible for emitting certain chemicals. Now, these chemicals are called as what? They are called as allelochemicals. What they are called as? Allelochemicals. And, uh, these allelo chemicals impede the growth of, they impede the growth of, they stop the growth of other vegetation, clear, other vegetation. So, when they are responsible for stopping the growth of other vegetation by release of these chemicals, this phenomena is called as what? This phenomena is called as allelopathic effect, clear, this phenomena is called as allelopathic effect. So, in UPSC, they have asked you, what is allelopathy? Clear, what is allelopathy? And uh, this is called as allelopathic effect. They are also responsible for what? They are responsible for release of allergens. Clear, they would be responsible for release of allergens too. So, this is called as allelopathic effect and these kind of plants would be called as invasive, exotic or alien plants. I think that is clear. But let us, in UPSC, they can ask you questions on this also, but they can ask you questions on examples also. Clear? They would be asking you questions or uh, examples also. So, let us take some examples. Clear? Let us take some examples. Now, one example that we are citing here is of Parthenium. Second is of Lantana. Third is of water hyacinth. Fourth is of blue pine. So, let us talk about all these kind of. Now, see, first is called as what? It is called as Parthenium. Parthenium is what? Parthenium is a type of weed. Type of weed. And it came to India how? When we were responsible for. Yes, yes. Ab, ab, bachcha, aap log dhyan doge idhar. Ab saru, sachi tharur ko chhod do. Meri voice kaisi hai? Jaisa aapka voice bahut hi achcha. Thank you so much. Ab unhe chhodo aap. Aap thoda isi yaad karte chalo saath saath. Clear? Just iske saath saath chalo aur isko yaad karte chalo. Don't worry about sachi tharur. Sachi tharur is famous for something, infamous for some other things. Clear? So <laughs> let's come here. Now uh, type. This is called as what? This is a type of weed. Now, how it came to India? It came to India when we were responsible for importing 
wheat from US. Clear? So, when you imported wheat from US, the seeds of Parthenium reached India. Clear? The seeds of Parthenium reached India and it has spread on a large scale. You can see on near the railway tracks, Parthenium is present. Near the farm fields, Parthenium are present. In ba Bangalore is the worst affected city due to Parthenium. Earlier it was called as Garden City, now it is called as Parthenium City also. <laughs> so Parthenium. But what kind of impact it has? Now it is responsible for impeding the growth of. growth It impedes the growth of the growth of vegetables vegetables then also leguminous crops legumes legumes are responsible for enhancing the fertility of soil legumes and not only vegetable legumes but also grasses so it is responsible for impeding growth of legumes also vegetables grasses and as such it reduces the fertility of the soil also parthenium clear as such it reduces the fertility of soil also now second is called as what it is called as lantana lantana fine lantana is what lantana is if this is a weed it is a type of shrub now this was this didn't automatically come to india but it was brought to india and brought to India. Why? Brought to India because it was used as an ornamental plant. Now, when we say ornamental plant, it means that it is used for what? It is used for decor purpose, decoration ke liye, because it has brightly colored flowers. So, that's why it would be called as what? It would be called as ornamental plant. Clear? It has brightly colored flowers. So, that's what it would be called as ornamental plant. So, it's a shrub. It's ornamental plant. It's used for decor purpose. And this is responsible for, this was brought to India. This is responsible for impeding the growth of coffee plantation. Coffee plantation. Then also teak plantation. Then also not only coffee plantation, teak plantation, but also eucalyptus. Eucalyptus. And also we can see coconut palm. So if they ask you, allelopathic effect of lantana, allelopathic effect of lantana is in all these vegetations. Clear? There, there is another invasive plant in India which is called as water hyacinth. Water hyacinth is what? Now it is also an ornamental plant. It has also brightly colored flowers. You can see in lakes, water hyacinth is present. And this belongs to where? This belongs to the Amazon basin. This is belonging where? It is belonging to the Amazon basin. And it is responsible for what? It is responsible for degradation of lakes in India. Degradation of lakes in India. Fine. Degradation of lakes in India. ठीक है ये क्या कर रहे हैं ये तालाबों का निम्नीकरण कर रहे हैं डिग्रेडेशन ऑफ लेक्स इन इंडिया कहां से आए हैं एमेजोन बेसिन से ऑर्नामेंटल प्लांट है क्योंकि डेकोर पर्पस के लिए आप इसे यूज कर सकते हैं सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज वाटर हाइसिंथ एंड इट रिड्यूसेस और क्या करते हैं ये इट रिड्यूसेस द डिसॉल्व्ड ऑक्सीजन लेवल बिकॉज़ देखो ऑक्सीजन लेक्स में रहते हैं रिड्यूसेस द डिसॉल्व्ड ऑक्सीजन लेवल Oxygen is always present in the lakes, clear, which is utilized by aquatic organism for their survival. Clear, jo jaliya jeev jantu ke dwara upyog mein lai jate hain oxygen. To oxygen agar level kam ho jayega to kya hoga? Degradation of lakes would take place. Clear, degradation of lakes would take place. Now, Yes, it indicated also a high nitrogen level. That's also another thing which is associated with that. Then we can see another invasive plant is called as what? In India is called as blue pine. Blue pine can be seen where? Kaha dekha ja sakta hai Hilly tracks of, hilly tracks of Himachal Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir. It can be seen in the hilly tracks of Himachal Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir. And if you talk about blue pine, this is also subtropical American in origin. 
so it belongs to subtropic region of america american in origin एंड ब्लू पाइन से क्या होता है ब्लू पाइन हिली ट्रैक्स में आप देख रहे हो हिली ट्रैक्स ऑफ हिमाचल प्रदेश एंड हिली ट्रैक्स ऑफ हिमाचल प्रदेश में आप देख सकते हैं कि ये पाए जाते हैं नाउ दिस इज इम्पीडिंग द ग्रोथ ऑफ वॉट ये क्या करते हैं जो आठ वनस्पति हैं जिनको कहते हैं हम अष्टवर्गा जिसका उपयोग किया जाता है आयुर्वेद में सो द एट मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स विच आर यूज फॉर आयुर्वेद पर्पस नाउ इट इज इम्पीडिंग द ग्रोथ ऑफ अष्टवर्गा राइट इट इम्पीड द ग्रोथ ऑफ इम्पीड द ग्रोथ ऑफ द ग्रोथ ऑफ अष्टवर्गा अष्टवर्गा Eight medicinal plants. Clear. Now this, these are invasive plants in India. That's your Parthenium, Lantana, and water hyacinth, blue pine. So these are all invasive plants in India. Clear. Already in examination, they have asked you about what? They have asked you about Julie flora. Clear. They have asked you about uh, invasive plant which is called as Julie flora. and julie flora was brought uh, by the british in rajasthan clear and the purpose of bringing this plant to rajasthan was to check desertification in rajasthan but now we can see that this is responsible for what julie flora this is responsible for degradation in rajasthan julie flora is much in news i know that but we now all those eight plants you have, don't have to remember remember only ashtavarga because uh, Javitri is there. Some thing I can remember, but all 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 those eight plants you don't have to remember. Now, Julie flora is news. Definitely, it is news. But already a question has been asked in uh, on Julie flora in your preliminary examination, so they won't be repeating it. So that's why I am taking the these plants and also discuss Kappa ficus. Clear. Also discussed Kappa ficus. Ha ha. Kajri bhi hai. Fine. So all these things now. next thing that you have to know we have to return back to biosphere again <laughs> and we have discussed that biotic components are plants animals and microorganism biotic components are plants animals and microorganism plants they perform photosynthesis photosynthesis is performed by algae also and all different types of algae we have discussed and uh, a photosynthesis is performed by bacteria also but an agency can be autotroph not only on the basis of photosynthesis koi bhi agency autotroph swaposhi matra prakash sansleshan ke aadhar par hi nahi ho sakta hai wo ho sakta hai rasayan sansleshan ke aadhar par bhi a agency can be autotroph not only on the basis of photosynthesis but also on the basis of what also on the basis of chemosynthesis so let's see so and i'll come to again i'll come to invasive species endemic ka matlab hai ki endemic sirf wahi par paaye jate hain to usko kehte hain endemic clear ha khejri pad sakte hain discussed yes now <coughs> now see when we are talking about an agency can be autotroph not only on the basis of photosynthesis but also on the basis of chemosynthesis look suppose this is the ocean that we are talking about clear and inside the ocean we know that remember two or three things here in context of oceans this is suppose the oceanic floor but co2 absorption in ocean is only to a level of 300 meters of the upper part isi mein co2 absorption hota hai clear co2 absorbed is in the upper part of the ocean so upper part of the ocean only absorbs co2 and why we are saying upper part of the oceans on, only absorb co2 why because this part of the ocean is in contact with atmosphere clear so this part of the ocean is in contact with atmosphere to iska matlab kya hai iska matlab hai bachcho phytoplankton algae all those agencies 
which are responsible for performing photosynthesis, all zooxanthellae, diatoms, etc., etc., that they would be confined to the upper part of the ocean only. Clear? Not below that. So, food chain also would be present in the upper part of the ocean only. But in 1976, I will discuss more another species that we will discuss also is Indian star tortoise, it can be asked as question. So, let us discuss some other species also. But at the end, let us first of all cover up the topics. Because I wish that I want to cover up. Zux enthele kya hai? Zux enthele is nothing but a type of algae which is in a symbiotic relationship with coral. Ye ek sehwal hai jo corals ke saath, pravalon ke saath sahjeevi sambandh mein rehta hai. Clear? Now see, for phytoplankton and algae would be come, uh, confined to upper part of the ocean only. We and we can see the food chain would be constituted here only. But if we go to the depth of the ocean, we can find a food chain here is also present. So how can a food chain be present in the depth of the ocean where there is no uh, penetration of sunlight? So photosynthesis definitely cannot be performed and where there is where there is no penetration of sunlight and we can see uh, yes khejri is the state tree of rajasthan theek hai theek hai ab usi mein nahi rehna hai bachcho ab bahar bhi nikalna hai let's let's come out we have to cover a lot now see we are saying that that upper part of the ocean co2 is present in 300 meters because this part is in contact with atmosphere and phytoplankton's algae are present here. They are performing photosynthesis. A food chain would be present in the upper part. But the obstruction of solar radiation takes place by the water body. And CO2 is not present in the lower part. So, in 1976, there was a, a experiment which was called as deep horizon experiment. Or deep horizon experiment mein ye paya gaya ki a food chain is present in the lower part of the ocean also. Clear? A food chain is present in the lower part of the ocean also. And how come a food chain would be present in the lower part where there cannot be any penetration of sunlight when there is no CO2 is present? How can photosynthesis? But the meaning here is not photosynthesis. The basis here is not photosynthesis. We know that that an autotrop can be uh, the basis of being an autotrop is not only photosynthesis. The basis of being an autotrop is also another process which is called as chemosynthesis. So, what happens from the oceanic floor? Seepage of chemical takes place like methane. Seepage of chemical takes place like hydrogen sulfide. And bacteria which are present over here, bacteria which are present over here near the oceanic floor, and particularly those bacteria which are present near a pool here, see in the oceanic floor, agar oceanic floor ko dekho, there are depressions here in which the water is filled. Now, these pools are called as what? These pools are called as brine pools. So, the bacteria which are present here would be utilizing these chemicals, these chemicals ko utilize karenge, to synthesize natural organic matter natural organic matter. Now, this process is called as what? It is called as chemosynthesis. Clear? This process would be called as what? It would be called as chemosynthesis. Fine. So, if we are saying in the upper part what is happening? If CO2 is utilized, sunlight is utilized to synthesize natural organic matter, then the process is called as photosynthesis. But if chemicals are utilized to synthesize natural organic matter by bacteria present near the brine pools, this process would be called as what? This process would be called as Yes, we will discuss all the questions. Look, what have I done? Serially arranged kar diya aapko question. One topic discuss karenge, then we will discuss a question. We will discuss a set. So, it will be about 2-2 hours in one topic. 
उसके बाद विल विल कम अगेन टू द क्वेश्चंस फाइन नाउ सी दिस प्रोसेस वुड बी कॉल्ड एज कीमोसिंथेसिस नाउ हियर दिस बैक्टीरिया व्हिच इज परफॉर्मिंग कीमोथिंस कीमोसिंथेसिस इज बिहेविंग एज व्हाट इट इज बिहेविंग एज अ ऑटोट्रॉफ ये बैक्टीरिया तो ऑटोट्रॉफ है ना यहां पर यहां पर ऑटोट्रॉफ होने का बेसिस क्या है कीमोसिंथेसिस यहां पर ऑटोट्रॉफ होने का बेसिस क्या है photosynthesis so here we are saying bacterias are behaving as a autotroph and they are responsible they are primary producers of the food chain so they are primary producer of the food chain a food chain would be constituted here also so you can see there are two types of food chain which are present in the ocean one in the upper part the basis of which is photosynthesis and second in the lower part the basis of which is chemosynthesis is that clear clear fine yes himanshu many questions came from the notes this is also i hope so that the questions would be from the notes itself fine so the basis would be from the basis of here the food chain basis here would be chemosynthesis the basis of food chain in the upper part would be photosynthesis let's move ab dekho oceanic floor ko hum log discuss kar rahe hain bachcho so we have discussed near the oceanic floor many things but oceanic floor is also known for what it is also known for gas hydrates so let's look into that what are gas hydrates clear choti choti baatein hain karte chalo all these are questions it can come any time in your examination so let's pick up all these questions one by one ek to ye ho gaya second now suppose we are talking about again oceanic floor again we are going to the oceanic floor now here we say that oceanic floor is also site of what it is also site of gas hydrates so what are gas hydrates as such see water has a unique characteristic water would be responsible for forming a cage like structure cage like structure in which gas like methane we know that from the oceanic floor gases like methane is seeping so water can form a cage like structure in which gas like methane gets stored this would be called as what it would be called as gas hydrates see as far as the characteristic of water is concerned water at low temperature and high pressure what is this area this area is of low temperature because absence of solar radiation high pressure because of the volume of water so water at low temperature and high pressure would be forming a cage like structure clear nimn tapman mein aur adhik dabav mein jal jo hai wo kya karegi ek pinjade numa sanrachna banayegi and this is in which gases like methane would be getting stored जिसमें गैस मीथेन जाकर संचित हो जाएगी एंड दिस वुड बी कॉल्ड एज व्हाट दिस वुड बी कॉल्ड एज गैस हाइड्रेट्स व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज दैट वी वुड बी एक्सट्रैक्टिंग दिस हाइड्रेट्स गैस हाइड्रेट्स डिसोसिएटिंग देम ब्रेकिंग देम क्लियर ब्रेकिंग देम एंड व्हेन वी आर ब्रेकिंग देम यस दे आर मिथेन बेड्स नाउ एंड व्हेन दे आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर ब्रेकिंग देम देन वी कैन एक्सट्रैक्ट दी नेचुरल गैस मिथेन फ्रॉम इट so if we are responsible for extracting these hydrates we are responsible also for breaking them and we would be getting natural gas methane from them so this is called as what this is called as gas hydrates is that clear this is referred to as gas hydrates india's gas hydrate reserves include the krishna godavari basin so all these are india's gas hydrate reserves the krishna godavari basin godavari basin the kerala konkan basin kerala konkan basin mahanadi basin mahanadi basin so all these are india's gas hydrates reserve but do remember that yes these are methane beds only and also do remember that coal bed gas is also methane gas hydrate is also methane shale gas is also methane clear all these are natural gases shale gas is also methane so these are called as gas hydrates but formation of gas hydrates won't be only near the oceanic floor formation of gas hydrates also would be taking place where also would be taking place in the permafrost region so we say that 
water has a unique characteristic at low temperature and high pressure this one condition for formation of gas hydrates but also at extremely low temperature because permafrost region is a region of extremely low temperature water would be responsible for forming a cage like structure in which gases like methane gets stored and this would be called as what this would be referred to as gas hydrates so gas hydrates won't be present in only and only near the oceanic floor gas hydrate also would be present near the permafrost region clear so gas hydrate would be also present near the permafrost region permafrost region is what permafrost ki se kehte hain permafrost is a region which is covered with ice now this is a layman definition clear anpad aadmi aise bolega covered with ice permafrost there are two specific definitions of permafrost one is that this is a region where even the summer solar radiation is unable to thaw unable to melt the frozen soil then it's called as permafrost and if suppose the temperature of an area does not enhance beyond the freezing point for two consecutive years then that area would be called as permafrost clear so formation of gas hydrates would be taking place where it would be taking place near the oceanic floor and also near the permafrost region clear also near the permafrost region and as far as permafrost region is concerned the formation of permafrost region would be taking place at greater altitude that is mountain glaciers or it would be taking place at greater latitude means the polar areas so in that area only the permafrost region would be witnessed so we can see that in permafrost region also gas hydrates are present clear in permafrost region also gas hydrates are present yes yes all of you hello fine in also permafrost region gas hydrates are present yashi maitri all these <coughs> permafrost region is present but we are not talking about extracting gas hydrates from the permafrost region because permafrost region is responsible for regulating the temperature of earth clear regulating the temperature of earth yes uh, definitely so permafrost region also includes the arctic region or the antarctic region now this the, the third thing that we have studied about the oceanic floor but near the oceanic floor that's another type of question also which can be framed from this area near the oceanic floor we can see that small sized rock like structures are littered near the oceanic floor we can see small sized rock like structured are littered chote chote rock jaise shallow jaise sanrachna hai yahan par phele hue hain small size rock like structures are littered and these small rock like structures which are littered phele hue hain jo now these would be called as what these are called as polymetallic nodules recently we saw that that lithium was discovered in jammu and kashmir and this uh, time to celebrate what if these uh, permafrost it would call global warming will come to that prabhakar will come to that global warming that it would be further responsible for enhancing global warming that is included in today's topic also <laughs> clear but these are called as what these are called as polymetallic nodules and polymetallic nodules consists of we you know that lithium is used for batteries of smartphones and laptops but lithium ion batteries are there but as far as uh, the polymetallic nodules are concerned polymetallic nodules are also used for batteries of laptops and smartphones and it consists of what it consists of iron it consists of nickel it consists of cobalt it consists of manganese so these are four things which are present in polymetallic nodules clear polymetallic nodules four things which are present in polymetallic nodules and we can see the government of india has launched pmns yes okay angry sundarya aap positivity se padhate hain bahut badhiya sir thank you iron nickel cobalt there are four things dekho iron nickel cobalt manganese fine iron nickel cobalt magnesium
مش ایسے بھی بنا سکتے ایک ورڈ بنا لو ایم آئی سی این مکن سو ایم اسٹینڈس فار میگنیز آئی آئی آئرن کوبالٹ اینڈ نکل فائن سو دیٹس دی فور تھنگس وچ آر پرزینٹ ان پولی میٹالک ناٹ از گڈ آفٹر نو ایوری بڈی ناؤ ایکسٹریکشن آف پولی میٹالک ناڈیولس ایکسٹریکشن آف پولی میٹالک ناڈیولس وڈ بی ڈن and uh, it would be done under a mission of india and that mission of india is called as what it is referred to as deep ocean mission ab ise samjho the ministry of earth sciences of india i have been saying that the ministry of earth sciences of india sciences of india in the year 2018 in the year 2018 with an allocation of 8000 crore rupees was responsible for launching was responsible for launching deep ocean mission deep ocean mission clear and this deep ocean mission is having two or three main objectives one first objective is to develop to develop a submersible vehicle develop a submersible vehicle now this submersible vehicle would be carrying three persons inside so one two three persons inside and this would be going to a depth of 6000 meter inside the ocean for extraction of what polymetallic nodules clear to develop a submersible vehicle which can be used for extraction of polymetallic nodules and second is what second is to develop to develop a desalination plant desalination plant plant with the help of what with the help of tidal energy to develop a desalination plant with the help of tidal energy clear and tidal energy why because when you are responsible for some cities of india particularly the coastal cities of india like chennai they suffer from what they suffer from economic water scarcity economic water scarcity means that they have abundance of water on one side that is the ocean but either water happens to be saline or contaminated in nature so in order to get fresh water there would be a very high incurrence of cost so this kind of water scarcity would be called as what this kind of water scarcity would be called as economic water scarcity and we can see that desalination and why because the cost of desalination plant is very high so we would be using tidal energy to reduce the cost clear because desalination is a energy intensive process you evaporate water a number of times to make it pure so why not use tidal energy for that purpose and reduce the cost clear okay after these nodules would be found along with the hydrates yes 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 good afternoon good afternoon present in your class thank you so much sovik fine now see these <coughs> this would be responsible the, the second component of uh, the deep ocean mission first is to develop a submersible vehicle second is to establish a desalination plant with the help of tidal energy as such tidal energy as such clear now this for this purpose india has been allocated the ministry of earth sciences has been allocated an area of what an area of 75000 square meter kilometer not square meter square kilometer in the in in the central indian ocean basin central indian ocean basin that has been offered and this has been allocated by the international seabed authority it has been allocated by the international seabed authority which is based on what which is based on unclos that is un convention on law of seas clear thank you so much about my sn okay you loved it thank you so much very good now this is called as what deep ocean mission so what we have covered up up till now we have started with biosphere 
and we are simply making biosphere an excuse to discuss a number of contemporary issues. We have discussed in that what invasive plants also, we have discussed in that kappa ficus also, we have discussed in that chemosynthesis also, we have discussed in that gas hydrates also, we have discussed in that deep ocean mission also and extraction of polymetallic nodules. Clear extraction of polymetallic nodules. Let us return back again. Let us again return back to uh, biosphere and discuss animals and microorganisms. Clear? So, when we talk about we have not discussed animals, only we discuss plant and those agencies which are responsible for performing photosynthesis. But when you talk about animals and microorganisms, animals and microorganisms microorganisms can be of different types, can be of different types. For example, they can be saprophytes and when we are talking about saprophytes, they can be also just let us me enumerate all these parasites, they can be scavengers. scavengers. Now, when we talk about saprophytes, saprophytes are responsible for what? Saprophytes are responsible for decomposition of, decomposition of dead plants and animals, decomposition of dead plants and animals. For example, bacteria, for example, fungus, they are saprophytes, they are responsible for what? They are responsible for Yes, vegans are very good. <laughs> now, we will talk about vegans also today because we have to deal with uh, that uh, a thematic area pr uh, proposed by the IP, uh, UNEP report, emission gap <laughs> report and that says that plant based diet should be preferred instead of milk and meat consumption. We will discuss that. Yes, I am in Delhi center only today. This class is from Delhi center, Himansu. Now, <coughs> saprophytes is responsible for decomposition of dead plants and animals, but fungus are saprophytes, bacteria are saprophytes and these saprophytes, when they decompose, the end product of such decomposition is what? The end product of such decomposition is in a molecular stage. Why we are saying end product of such decomposition is in a molecular stage? See, you would have studied in your school days nitrogen cycle. In nitrogen cycle, what you have to study is that nitrogen cycle is a process by which nitrogenous compounds are removed from the soil and they are reverted back to the soil. Clear? The process of removal of nitrogenous compounds from the soil is uh, there are many agencies which are responsible for that. For example, plants are responsible. For example, denitrifying bacteria are responsible. Leaching is the process which takes place and also responsible for removal of nitrogenous compounds from the soil. But the return back of nitrogenous compounds to the soil in the form of nitrates takes place by a process of nitrification and nitrogen fixation clear nitrification and nitrogen fixation. And when we are talking about nitrification and nitrogen fixation, we can see that uh, before nitrification, the decomposition of dead plants and animals should take place. And the decomposition of dead plants and animals, when decomposition of dead plants and animals takes place, uh, the end product of such decomposition is what? End product of such decomposition is ammonia. Ammonia is in a molecular stage. Then it combines with hydrogen ion from the soil, hydrogen ion from the soil to form what is called as ammonium and then the action of nitride and nitrate bacteria takes place. Clear? Then the action of nitrate and nitrate bacteria takes place. But the end product of decomposition is what? In a molecular stage. Clear? So, we say that when saprophytes are responsible for decomposition, the end product of such decomposition is in a molecular stage. Molecular stage. Clear? When you are talking about parasites, parasites can be all those animals 
Yes, Himanshu. I'll, I'll try to come to Delhi just before the PT and give you some also. No pressure on in, for environment. Okay. Fine. <coughs> just follow this session. You are, uh, there would be some ease for you. Fine. I request you all to follow this session so that there would be some ease for you. You should not come under pressure for environment before the preliminary examination. Fine. Nasim. Now, when we are talking about decomposition of dead plants and animals, the end product of such decomposition is always in a molecular stage. Parasites are what? Parasites are responsible for what? Deriving their nutrition from the host. Host is what? From where? They are responsible for deriving their nutrition. So, they derive their nutrition from the host and are responsible also for causing disease to them. For example, mosquito. They are deriving uh, their nutrition from our blood. So, we are the host for them and they are uh, responsible for causing disease to us also. Clear? They are responsible for, yes, yes. Uh, they are responsible for giving, uh, causing disease to us also. But when we are talking about scavengers, scavengers are responsible for cleaning the environment. For example, vultures are scavengers. For example, eagles are scavengers. So, they are responsible for cleaning the environment. And uh, we can see that uh, not only they are responsible for cleaning up the environment, but they are also responsible for decomposition. But the problem is what? That the end product of such decomposition is never in a molecular stage. Never in a molecular stage. It's in a bulk form. Meaning is what? Malu, vultures, agar cattles ko khate hain, to jo ejected matter vultures se nikalta hai, that's not in a molecular stage. It means that, that further needs to be decomposed by saprophyte in order to attain the molecular stage and return it back to the soil as such clear, return it back to the soil. But now here we will go again to current affairs and try to uh, uh, solve questions on and try to gather information. First, we will try to gather information. So, we will try to gather information on what? We will try to gather information on vultures. And why we are saying vultures? Because vultures is a type of scavengers. And the population of vultures in India has declined. Population of vultures in India has declined. The most common type of vulture in India is called as what? It is called as gyps vulture. Although there are many types of vulture in India. But the most common type of vulture in India is called as gyps vulture. And uh, we can see the earlier the population of gyps vulture in India was 40 million. But now it has reduced to what? It has reduced to 19,000. Clear 19,000. And we can see the breakup also among the 19,000. 6,000 is of what? 6,000 is of white backed. White backed. Gyps vulture. 6,000 is of white-backed gyps vulture. 12,000 is of long-billed, jinki choch, lambi ho. Long-billed gyps vulture. And we can see 1,000 is of 1,000 is of slender-billed slender-billed gyps vulture. 1000 is of slender built gyps vulture. So, if they ask you question, which gyps vulture is clear? Which gyps vulture is rarest among the three? So, rarest among the three kinds of gyps vulture is slender built gyps vulture. Clear slender built gyps vulture. In India, we can see there are Griffon Himalayan vultures also. Griffon Himalayan vultures also, which is present in the Himalayas, Tibet, Jammu Kashmir, all these areas. And they feed on what? They feed on yaks. They are responsible for feeding on yaks. But the concern is what? The concern in India is diminishing number of vultures. 
کلیئر اینڈ دیز آر تھری ٹائپس آف ولچرس دیز آر تھری ٹائپس آف ولچرس جپس ولچرس دیٹ یو ہیو ٹو ریمبر فرسٹ آف آل ناؤ سی دا سیکنڈ کنسرن از واٹ دیٹ وائی دا ڈیمنیشنگ نمبرس کین بی سین The diminishing number of vultures can be seen on account of many consideration, but the main consideration is what? The main consideration is diclofenac. So you can see the main reason behind their diminishing number is what? The main reason behind their diminishing number is a drug which is called as diclofenac. See, diclofenac is what? It is an anti-inflammatory drug. Anti-inflammatory drug. inflammatory drug which is used in cattle it is used in humans also when we feel the pain we are responsible for taking uh, when we feel the pain we are responsible when we are responsible for feeling the uh, pain we take diclofenac also so it's permissible for use in humans also Now, but diclofenac is used in cattle also, anti-inflammatory drug which is used in cattle. So when vultures are responsible for feeding the cattle, I'm saying that when vultures are responsible for feeding the cattle, what happens? The diclofenac passes into the food chain. Now, see, if any substance which it may be toxic, which may be chemical, it enters the food chain. That process is called as bioaccumulation. But if any chemical or substance reaches the higher strata of food chain, trophic levels of food chain, then it's called as biomagnification. So the entering of uh, diclofenic in the body of vultures is nothing but an example of what? Nothing but an example of critically endangered i um, vultures are now <laughs> we can see that nothing but an example of what the biomagnification as such so we can see that bioaccumulation is what bioaccumulation is a process through which the chemicals enter the food chain but biomagnification is a process through which it reaches the upper strata of the food chain so diclofenac reaching the upper strata of food chain is nothing but a process of biomagnification and diclofenac is responsible for what it's responsible for renal failure we can say or kidney failure among vultures clear kidney failure among vultures because of which the vultures death can be seen but the same drug diclofenac in the same manner is also responsible for diminishing number of eagles in india also clear the same drug in the same manner is also responsible for diminishing number of eagles in india also as far as diclofenac is concerned diclofenac has been banned for use in animals in india use in animals the question is that when it is responsible for renal failure or kidney failure in vulture why it is not responsible for such damage in humans see the immune system of different organism happens to be different in nature our immune system are well developed against diclofenac which is not in the case of vultures which is not in the case of vultures but this is not only the reason the reason for the diminishing number of vulture this is the main reason diclofenac but the reason behind the diminishing number of vultures also include what also includes electrocution clear the reason behind their diminishing number also includes electrocution the reason behind their diminishing number also includes loss of habitat for example there was a cyclone called nisarga and this nisarga cyclone was responsible for destroying the habitat of what habitat of vultures in maharashtra so loss of habitat is another reason electrocution is another reason and we can see sometimes use of pesticides use of pesticides in caracases in caracases of animals can be another reason for diminishing number of vultures for example i say
transmission line is also one reason that's why I have said electrocution I am not confused in vulture or eagles I am definitely sure about vulture but I have said that the eagles also have diminished in the same manner because of the same reason clear Fine. Okay. Now, Griffon does not come under the count of 19,000. Fine. Now, let's proceed. Let's cover up this because the time is less. So, use of pesticide in caracases of animals, in caracases of cattle also was responsible for one of the reasons behind the diminishing number of vultures. Now, why we are saying use of pesticides in caracases? See, vultures are always in a stiff competition with feral dogs, wild dogs to feed up the dead cattle. So, they happen to be in a stiff competition with feral dogs to feed up the dead cattle, in wild dogs to feed up the dead cattle. So, it means that if the number of vultures decline, the number of feral dogs would be enhancing. Clear? If the number of vultures decline, the number of feral dogs would be enhancing. The number of wild dogs would be enhancing. So, these gids are with the jungle cats and they are with the jungle cats and they are with the jungle cats. So, if you think about the gids of the gids, then the jungle cats will be with the jungle cats. Clear? And in Kamrup district, what happened was, Kamrup district is in Assam. In Kamrup district, the stray dogs were growing in large numbers. In order to control the stray dogs, what the municipal corporation of Kamrup did was, it sprinkled pesticides in the carcasses of cattle so that the stray dogs would be consuming it and they would be dying. Okay, I am looking like uh, Assam CM. Very good. All these are... See, now your concentration should be on environment only, not that I look like Assam CM, clear, not that I, my voice is like Sasi Tharoor, clear, please, <laughs> your concentration should be on environment right now, Maitri, Rishu, Punji, Ahastha, all Sanskriti, Sushobhit, please concentrate on environment. Let's revise all these things today. Fine. <coughs> Use of pesticide in caracases of animals. So, they used pesticide in the animals, the cattle, so that if suppose the uh, wild dogs or the feral dogs or the stray dogs, they consume it, they would be dying. But they were not consumed by them. They were consumed by whom? They were consumed by vultures and vultures died. Clear? So, when you are talking about the reasons behind their diminishing number, the reasons behind their diminishing number include what? It includes mainly diclofenac, then also electrocution, that's transmission lines in your words, then <laughs> loss of habitat, Nisarga cyclone, we've discussed use of pesticides in gardens, but the main reason is diclofenac. Clear? Diclofenac has been banned for use in animals in India. But we can see that substitute for them was used also. For example, in order, in substituting diclofenac, we used another drug for cattle, which was called as eclenofenac. Eclenofenac. Second was called as nemesulide. Third was called as ketoprofen. And all these drugs, ketoprofen, all these alternate drugs also prove to be detrimental for, all these drugs also prove to be detrimental for vultures. Clear? They prove to be detrimental for vultures.
बिकॉज एक्लेनोफेनिक एंड निमिसुलाइट गेट्स कन्वर्टेड इन टू डाइक्लोफेनिक विद इन आर्स ऑफ इट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन जितनी देर में देंगे कुछ दिन के बाद वो क्या होते हैं बल्चर्स के बॉडी में डाइक्लोफेनिक में कन्वर्ट हो जाते हैं पहले दो एक्लेनोफेनिक एंड निमिसुलाइट एंड कीटोप्रोफेन इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर वॉट इट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इनहेंसिंग what enhancing the toxic level in vultures so that's why we are saying that that these proved also detrimental for vultures clear proved detrimental for vultures but there are three trends noticed if we are saying that the number of vultures decline the number of wild dogs would enhance and if you are saying that the number of leopards enhance the number of vultures decline and if we are seeing the number of tigers in hens then we can see the number of vultures would be enhancing now what is these three trends that we are talking about now vultures are in a stiff competition with wild dogs to feed up the dead cattle vultures are always in a stiff competition with wild dogs to fine vultures are always in stiff competition with feral dogs to feed up the dead cattle so if suppose the number of vultures decline the number of wild dogs would be enhancing leopards you can see that leopards are never responsible for eating big animals they would be always consuming small prey as such and they do not consume it at one go what they do is that they are responsible for not consuming it at one go so they eat a part of it and they are responsible for hiding the remaining part of the animal on the trees which is beyond the visibility of vultures so suppose the number of leopards enhance the number of vultures in that area would be reducing number of leopards enhance the number of vultures in that area would be reducing and tigers are always responsible for consuming big animals big animals so you can see that if and it consume big animals they eat a part of it leave it in the open so this would be enhancing the food reservoir of vultures we can see that number of tigers if they enhance the number of vultures too would be enhancing number of vultures too would be enhancing so that's the trend that you have to notice clear now there was an initiative taken an initiative was taken by the bombay natural history society natural history society so the bombay natural history society bnhs is the oldest ngo functioning in india for the conservation of nature oldest ngo functioning in india for the conservation of nature and it has its logo as what it has its logo as hornbill just remember it has its logo as hornbill yes meloxic can can be used rather than eclenofenac fine <clears throat> so we can see that uh, this is the oldest ngo functioning in india for the conservation of nature it has hornbill at its as its logo so bombay natural history society of india along with the moefcc that is ministry of environment uh, environment forest and climate change were responsible for launching an initiative and that initiative was to establish vulture conservation and breeding centers vcbc vulture conservation and breeding centers these vulture conservation and breeding centers are called as what they are referred to as jatayu and these these centers have been established where it has been established at nine places in india so it has been established at nine places in india and these nine places in india include what it includes pinjar pinjar in haryana it also includes raja bhatkava raja bhatkava raja bhatkava is present where it is present in west bengal in alidwar district of west bengal it also includes rani rani is from assam 
इट ऑल्सो इंक्लूड्स केरवा केरवा इज इन भोपाल भोपाल एंड देन ऑल्सो वी कैन सी दैट इट ऑल्सो इंक्लूड्स व्हाट इट ऑल्सो इंक्लूड्स जूनागढ़ जूनागढ़ इट इज इन गुजरात इट ऑल्सो इंक्लूड्स नॉट ओनली जूनागढ़ बट इट ऑल्सो इंक्लूड्स हैदराबाद हैदराबाद इज इन तेलंगाना इट ऑल्सो इंक्लूड्स नंदन कानन नंदन कानन एंड दैट्स इन उड़ीसा इट ऑल्सो इंक्लूड्स मोटा मोटा इज नियर रांची and it also includes beribasi beribasi is where it is present in gorakhpur for a division so all these are nine vulture conservation and breeding centers clear now this this is not ramayan wala jata you please 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 <laughs> fine so so these are nine vulture conservation and breeding centers which have been established in india clear fine and we can see recently a trend was noticed that in the Val valmiki uh, tiger reserve and valmiki tiger reserve is in bihar uh, the number of vultures have enhanced clear number of vultures have enhanced now there are some also terminology which we have to know for example there is a term which is called as ecosystem ecosystem now we know that biosphere has what biosphere has three components that is biotic abiotic and the energy component but as far as ecosystem is concerned ecosystem is a fundamental unit of biosphere and it would be also having three similar components biotic abiotic and energy component clear so ecosystem is a fundamental unit of biosphere which would be having three similar components biotic abiotic and energy component clear and uh, ecosystem can be large for example terrestrial ecosystem is large ecosystem or coastal ecosystem is a large ecosystem but ecosystem can be constituted by also uh, can be on a small scale also and can be constituted by bacterial cells itself clear for example suppose if a question is asked which cell in human body is in largest number so the cells which are present in largest number is called as what it is called as bacterial cells and they are functional unit definitely they are functional unit of nature so ecosystem but if uh, if suppose we are talking about ecosystem in ecosystem we say that a biotic comp component is present biotic component is present and energy component is present 